Uh, Rightio, so I'm just going to go over the daily on Bitcoin. Most of you guys have probably seen my updates I've been posting anyway. Um, but what we're looking at is this target here for the last few days. Um, I was sort of thinking that if we're going to bounce off this, this down, um, the descending wedge here, if we were going to break out and go up, 4,000 would be the target, which we fell pretty just short of, but close enough. Uh, so I'm thinking we're probably going to see something similar happen here. Something I have noticed um, from various groups that I'm sort of read read bits and pieces from or involved with, there seems to be a lot of sell signals coming at the moment. Uh, I think Marcus posted something earlier regarding a signal group that he's on. Uh, we're, we're sort of aiming at 4,000 to be the final target. Uh, so 4,000 is the final target. What happens once everyone's taken their profit? So just be mindful that that, that area here is a very strong supply zone. The reason we know it's a strong supply zone is we had a fairly big market consolidation here, but there was another market consolidation here and then a big drop and it forced the market down quite low. Uh, so this is on the daily, this is our supply zone and it's very strong because we've, we've seen it tank the market before uh, with you know, not even trying to get back to it. We've finally just come back to retest it now. We've just touched the surface of it. Uh, but you know, it, it, could, it could just keep going. You know, this is crypto, anything could happen. But um, from what I'm hearing, this uh, could be sort of an exit zone for a lot of people who are taking profit. So just be mindful of that. If you're thinking about longing Bitcoin, at the moment, just be very, 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 very careful because we are, you're sort of longing at resistance. It's the same as shorting at support. You just, you just don't, you need, when we're this close to, to this level, you need to either wait for confirmation to get above this before you start thinking about longing or you're waiting for a confirmation to short. So this is where the action happens when we, when we hit these levels. But right now, you shouldn't be longing it. You'd be full, just lucky dipping it if you were longing it, hitting in this. In this block. I'm not saying it won't happen. It could definitely happen because, because anything can happen in crypto. But um, you know, if you're going by the rules of TA, uh, the, this shouldn't really break through just yet. If it does, you know, you, there should be time for it to do it. And if it does push through, there should be a retest to confirm that this is now support. So definitely don't be longing right now. Um, my, myself, my plan of attack at the moment is I'm pretty much all back in BTC apart from some alts that I'm trading um, just, just on Binance. Uh, have been keeping a close eye on EOS, Ethereum and Litecoin on MEX, but I haven't done any trades on it today. Just been keeping an eye on it and basically waiting for a, a new entry, but none of, nothing's really given me another entry right now. And when I say by giving me a new entry, it's the same as this. So right now, even if I thought Bitcoin was going up, what that could go up in the next couple of days, it has not given me an entry. This is not an entry. Your entry is the pullback. You want to be able to get in at the, the cheapest possible price. You want it for a bargain. You don't want to buy it for top dollar, hoping that it will go up even higher. So really what you should be doing is drawing fibs off this push, looking for this area here between the 618 and 38.2 and laddering your buyers through there if you were thinking to long it. But I would still only have a short-term target back to here. I wouldn't be going like this. I wouldn't be holding it through this shit. I'd be most likely taking profit here. And then this area here is a no trade zone. Okay. If you were holding through here, you'd just, you're kidding yourself. You know, I guess what you could do is bring your stop loss right up nice and tight. And just in case it pops through, then you, you, you're in. Um, but yeah, and worst case scenario, it pops back down and, and, and you get stopped out. But realistically, that's, that's a no trade zone. You shouldn't be trading in here. This is where you take profit and this is where you open new positions uh, or, or even short. So for now, uh, it should just be all eyes on Bitcoin to, to keep an eye and see what it does. We kind of want to see a repeat of this pattern here. If we get a repeat of this pattern and we slowly walk down and we sort of sit down and consolidate on the 50 and then we start to get some bullish patterns 
moving off the 50 uh, or the, the 618 or whatever, then you might look to, to long it, but factor in your risk to reward. So if we start to turn around on the 38, it's probably not that good of a trade, even though there is a small gain in there. Uh, let's see, what's that? So it's still 4% back to that previous high. But for me, my stop loss would be below the 618. So risk to reward is pretty shit in that aspect. You know, this is why you want to really maximize your position. Um, so you're shooting for a higher percentage and your stop loss is now a lower percentage. Now you've got a half decent risk to reward. Three to one's fine. Anything less than that, you've got to start weighing up the likelihood of, of your trade actually playing out. So if it was a sure thing and it was a two and a half to one, yeah, you could take it. But right now, it's not really a sure thing. It's more of an indecision because it could go both ways. There's no clear indication that we're going up. It's more of a, I hope this goes up or it could go up, might go down. You know, If there's too much indecision like that, then you've got to factor that into your risk to reward ratio. Um, I'm not sure if I'm making sense there, but you know, even if you see a really good trade set up and it, you've got a high risk to reward ratio, don't just use that as a reason to take a trade. You know, it, you know, it might look shithouse and you're like, yeah, but I'm shooting for eight to one. It doesn't matter if you're shooting for eight to one if the trade is very, very unlikely to play out because of multiple signals showing you that this probably won't play out. So have a realistic target in mind. And for me, a realistic target is taking profit at that previous high here. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where I'd be wanting to buy anything lower than anything between the 50 and the 61. You could ladder buys and start on the 38 just in case we sort of come down to the 50 and bounce off and we never get to the 61. Uh, but I would be wanting my overall position to be here. So, um, you know, using the same dollar cost average strategy I always use, 25%, 25%, and then 50% like that. So I will take a buy at 38, okay? And if it plays out, hey, it plays out. I don't mind having my stop loss like this. I know my risk to reward ratio looks shit now, but I'm not worried because if price does come down here, well, now all of a sudden that's my entry. So now my risk to reward's automatically fixed already. And then if we come down and hit the bottom, and you know, now my entry is down here. And that's gonna be my final risk to reward ratio. So that's actually my trade set up there. Um, yeah, something like that, I believe. So when I draw a box like that, 38, 50, 61, that's actually the true potential of my trade setup. So if, if we come down, hit bang on that 618, or even dip a little bit lower, you know, can happen. Um, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. I'm looking at that move. And that move will give me this chart layout. Oh, sorry, this predicted trade. 3.6 to 1, and a 5.67% profit with a 1.57% stop loss yeah, I'd probably give it a little bit more room than that to be honest but um, that's that's kind of what I'm looking at on Bitcoin um, <clears throat> but what will be interesting is how how hard we come through these if it doesn't show signs of each Fibonacci level holding um, holding support and I'll show you what I mean I might have to dive into the four hour to find this but I'll chuck it on on the daily here anyway You can kind of see it on the daily. We did get, see these first two candles? That showed me that the, the 23 did hold. Okay. Um, 38 was holding. Probably need to go the four hour to find it really. Yeah, see here how you can see the 38. That's the 38 line. You might not be able to see it here. So 38. You can see how the 38 was holding price. You know, we did dip the low a little bit. I think we nearly got a touch on the 50. I think depending on where you drew it from, we drew it from the bottom of that push there. We did get a touch on the 50. But what you want to see is these Fibonacci levels holding price. You know, you don't want to see it just smashing straight through it like that because then it shows you that there's not really any confidence on anyone laddering any buys unless it gets down to the 618. But then if it comes down here and doesn't bounce, you know, it's just going to keep going, keep going, keep going. So you kind of want to see these levels holding up. This level, you know, even though it's in a slight downtrend, it's still a consolidation or distribution zone because people who were long from here are taking profits, so they're closing positions, so you get a drop. But then there's people opening new positions, so you get a pump. 
and then a drop and a bump and a drop and a bump. You know, it's just open opening and closing position. People short, people shorting, you know, small short, people longing for a small scalp, people long for the next move. You just this is where everyone sets their orders up on the on the distribution zone. You don't set your orders in this move here because you're gonna get fucking wrecked. You set your moves up on this zone here. So that's why we get this consolidation. Once it's all finished, once all the orders are in the book and and you know the 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 market has sort of decided where it wants to go, it's weighed up the orders and it says, Radio, we're going up, and then we go up. You can see this little move here. How it started to move up. This would have caught FOMO buyers as long traders would have been loading up, thinking, oh, yep, yep, it's going, let's go, let's go, jump in. We've broken out of this. So a lot of people were looking at this. See that? People were looking at that saying, yep, yeah, we've broken out, load up, everyone's long. And then they just rip it back down. That would have liquidated or you know stopped out a whole bunch of long traders. Then it went the way I wanted to. So this is exactly what we've seen time and time again in this sort of move, just in the flip side. So this is the exact same thing where we've got a distribution zone. You know, after a big drop, we've got people taking uh, closing their shorts. We've got people taking longs, we've got people taking new shorts. We're moving around, moving around, moving around. Once the market has decided where it wants to go, bang, liquidate all the shorts and then go down. It's the exact same move we saw here. FOMO'd people in and then shot it back down. I know it looks a little bit different, but it's the same sort of thing. You know, it could have just been a red candle down here and then move up, but much the same thing. This would have that candle there would have brought so much people into the market just to get fucked on, basically. Clear some orders out of the book and then let it go. So, yeah, what I'm seeing on Bitcoin, don't do anything too rash right now. If anything, just sit in it and watch it. Have a plan. I personally wouldn't be doing anything until we start heading down to here. If you do not, if it does not do that, if it starts turning around and, and goes up quicker, then so be it. I'm in BTC, so I'll just ride the dollar value up. You know, I, I don't care if I don't long it. I'm not going to get upset about missing it. Like, yeah, it sucks, but um, you know, if we start going up here and we break that and we go to 5,000, cool. I've made profit regardless. You, know, you don't have to be in a trade on BTC. You want to make sure you get shorts right, but the longs don't really matter that much. 